eerie foggy mornings here in the bay. So thick you can't see the two towers of the Golden Gate that peek up over the hills on a clear day. But Sausalito is an anomaly, and like a spotlight from the heavens, the sun shines. Good morning, everybody. If we didn't have to wake up so early, it'd be the best day to sleep in because the fog is still setting between, you can hear the foghorn, setting between the gate and San Francisco. You can't even see San Francisco this morning, but it's gorgeous in Sausalito. But I'm thinking because it's so foggy, the ferries can't maybe drive so fast or the ships are slowed down because it wasn't nearly as rolly as it's been, you know, the last handful of days that we've been here. Garrett's got the engine going. I'm getting coffee going because Heather worked her magic and got us a spot at the Spalding Wooden Boat, I think it's Wooden Boat Center. Um, I'll have to double check on that. So we're gonna pull in there. It's a little bit tight between the dock, which has, I wanna say it's the oldest sailboat, historical boat in San Francisco called Frida. So it's tight between Frida, who's on the dock at the end, and uh, pilings on the other side. Yep, that's how the propane is right now. And Garrett's been working all day yesterday. He was running and getting parts for doing the proper running of our propane. What can I help with this morning? Coffee's robustifying. Sweet. You can start pulling up the anchor. Okay. Do you have uh, dock lines picked out? Oh, yeah, I guess we need dock lines on. Yeah. We're headed to the north part of Sausalito to do something a little different this week. It's been 17 days since we left the Napa dock, so we broke out our dock lines and fenders for this special opportunity. Every docking situation is unique, and we always make sure we're on the same page. We're also trying to get in there. It's high tide is in an, about an hour, maybe a little less now, and we hope we have enough water to get in there. <laughs> um, we're not too deep. We're like just shy of five feet, um, but Garrett went over there in the dinghy yesterday and kind of looked at stuff. All right, I'm gonna set up some cameras so I can capture this as best as I can without actually holding a camera today. <laughs> um, but I'm really excited to check out the Spalding Wooden Boat Center. They have like a little summer camp. I don't know what ages the kids are at. I don't really know too much. So I'm really excited to kind of get the tour and share it with you guys and I know Heather's super excited. Thinner now. <laughs> 
that looks great. spot. Oh, I don't know what to look at or film first. Garrett did an awesome job pulling in here. It is pretty tight and Frida behind us is quite the beanie girl. Look at those hips. Frida is 137 years old and often referred to as the matriarch of the San Francisco Bay. She's the oldest sailing yacht on the west coast said to have been built on a beach in Tiburon. Having just gone through an eight year restoration, she launched right here in 2014. We'll get to see more of her later. Springing her up. Do they haul boats all just with the crane? Yeah, I can't wait. This 1930s crane does all of the hauling. Oh yeah, got the fuel dock right behind us. Gas is 836 <laughs> and diesel's 8. 15 right now. Oh, I can't wait to check it out. Like, they got a boat just in frame in the shop. So cool. Now to tidy the boat from our like two days, three days, three days of project mode, <laughs> editing and boat projects. It's not too bad. We tidied up a little bit yesterday. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, but Garrett had a really awesome idea too while we have the dock. We might even be able to stay through the weekend, but we might have some friends coming. So we might have to have fun over the weekend. So <laughs> we might have another today and tomorrow work day. That's like a proper Monday through Friday. Yeah, uh, we'll see. I only want to come in and out of here once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little nerve wracking for you. We had like, I, I feel like we had a foot. On either side. Yeah. Oh, I feel like we had a foot on one side and less than a foot on the other side. And I on didn't one see side, Frida's side, but yeah. And on one side is like gnarly, crusty pilings. And on the other side is a historic, beautifully restored sailboat that is apparently the oldest <laughs> sailboat. In, in San, Francisco. San Francisco Bay, <laughs> like the oldest functioning sailing boat in San Francisco Bay, and it's like a historical monument. And <laughs> <laughs> definitely you, don't want to hit that. And she's got like glistening top sides. <laughs> I'm just like, oh shit. <laughs> we probably had like three inches at one point because I was just sort of like perching us there, maybe six. Because I was like, just had my hands there just to make sure we didn't go over a little bit, but you did an awesome job. Thank like, you. it was perfect. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't be better, and you were going slow. Mm -hmm. Everything was calm. I had enough time to shuffle my feet around the deck to look mm -hmm. at everything. So Only go as fast as you're willing to hit something. Word. And that's why I love that big barn door rudder, too. Because you don't need way. 
like just mm. barely, barely ghosting along. And if you, you can really just kind of yank her over yeah. and be able to swing her around mm -hmm. a little. Nice. Yeah. All right, we're going to tidy some things. I don't know if what age these kids are and what time they show up or we don't really know anything. We're just, we're here, happy to be here. While waiting for the summer sailing students, we continue a project. I see you. <laughs> We're drilling another hole through the deck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna secure the tanks on either side of the davits like that. Just kind of temporarily hung there just to get the placement of where they're gonna be. And then I need to have a through deck, you know, just something to, with kind of like a stand pipe so I can run the line through. And then I'm probably just gonna use like a, that like rubber kind of waterproofing tape and just tightly wrap it. That should be fine. So we're just gonna do it on the opposite side from where that tube that has our wires, which is still not totally finished. Nope. <laughs> but it's finished yeah. enough to keep the water out. Yeah. That's all that matters. So put the propane through there. It'll come through the deck and come through the back side of the transom behind that half bulkhead. And then we'll lead, probably cut a hole through that bulkhead and lead it some, and go under oh, under? Quarter berth. Okay. So a hole somewhere under, it'll come under along the hull and then to the back of the stove over there. A few pieces of hose to make the distance and uh, one hole through the deck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just doing random tidying down below here, moving some things around and then just being available if this guy ever feels like asking for help. <laughs> Probably when the hole is drilled and he needs somebody to go underneath yes. the aft deck. <laughs> His so back much... has been a little giving some warning signs the last few days. And so he's been trying to take it easy as much as possible. <laughs> We're motivated by the sounds of the yard and not being the only ones with an extensive list of projects before welcoming future sailors on board. And, uh, she's by no means done, still a lot of work to do. We built the boat mostly up in Washington. That's where we built the main structure on our friend's property. Garrett used to teach a summer sailing class and it was neat to hear him share his inspirations and maybe pass on some. A lot of different fun kind of woods down there that came from. It's very uh, cool. A bunch of Thank different you. Places. Thank you. It's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> Our sails were built over in uh, in Maine by a small husband and wife owned sail loft, and they do traditional sail and canvas. So all of these are hand hand stitched. Um, yeah, so if you feel them, they're quite heavy. Yeah. And that rope is super soft. Yeah, thanks guys for coming. You're welcome. Thank you. After giving a tour, we got to take one. We were dying to step aboard this West Coast sister. They got these up at, uh, in, the, in the foothills, aren't they beautiful? Absolutely. And so one of these, there you go, that's a sawn yeah. frame, but that's the only sawn frame wow. thing oh. that I've seen. But aren't they something? They are incredible. But, I mean, we could take a direct hit. Are these? Um, was she reframed or? Yo, oh yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I assume that she's We're not, not we are not sure. <laughs> I think the original, she's probably not 20% original. This is absolutely beautiful. She's built like a tank. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that the truth? Yeah. 1885? 1885, yeah. Wow. So she's 137 years on, you know, and, and she, as I told you, she was the flagship over at Corinthian. <laughs> Just absolute work of art. Wow. Look at the size of these beams. Yeah. That is incredible. I just hate seeing her like this. We'll have her straighten up a bit oh, tomorrow. Our boat is just constantly, everything explodes when we do a project and all the tools and everything comes out and then we try to rein it back in. I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, her wow. name in the day. And this is her overall. 35 feet like Red Aviva and Douglas fir planking too. Her frames after restoration are black locust, 
and her fasteners are now bronze. Much of the rebuild was done by budding shipwrights. The work is never done, but she's back sailing on the bay today. I see so many similarities. Dead eyes in the rigging, old growth fur and eye bolts through her deck, leather work and three strand line. New ideas too, for handrails and chafe protection on the mast. Who's a good yard dog? Yeah. We get a little dog fix. <laughs> Um, She's probably as old as well. We um, just started this apprenticeship program. It's uh, we've done our first round, and we've also accepted our um, first couple of applicants for our second round or second year. It's hard to break into the maritime industry if you didn't grow up in it or you know, know somebody know who knows somebody. somebody. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, there's a, a real lack of skilled labor in this field right now. Um, and college isn't for everyone and not everyone can afford college and some people learn in a hands-on way much better. Yeah, yeah. So, me for sure. Yeah, right? <laughs> and it was me, yeah. too. me too. I mean, I did yeah. go to college, but like, I definitely have learned everything I know about boats by just doing it and by having other folks that taught me and I basically unofficially apprenticed with yeah. people for a long time and that's how I learned everything I know as a captain. This apprenticeship program is designed for kids that are leaving high school, graduated high school, but not going to go to college. It's paid and the idea is that we have a um, a period of time where they just work with us here in the yard and also in our partner programs where we take them to the welding shop, we take them to the riggers, we take them to these other places. And then at the end, we place them in a three month kind of like a paid internship at another facility so they get to see how another boatyard or another oh, shop awesome. works as well. Mm -hmm. That's super cool because I know for me, when I was in that transitional period, this is something I totally would have done. You would have loved but this. It, you know, it didn't exist. It didn't exist. Yeah. 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 So little like trade school stuff. I mean, even yeah. in high schools and things now that, There's you know, no shop classes class. yeah. disappearing, yeah. art yeah. classes disappearing. Yeah. So where are they going to get the knowledge? Exactly. And now yeah. there's something where they can get the knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. And how long yeah. is the program? It's a year. A year. How cool. A paying program for young people to get their hands in on everything boats. In addition to the new apprentice program, they also have adult and youth classes, many of which involve building and sailing these Pelican sailboats. The center is also a full functioning boatyard and open to the public. Basically a boat nerd's dream. That kind of whatever comes in that's yeah. interesting. And Anything boat water related, yeah. we're in. Yeah, we're in. Yeah, we're in. <laughs> is this where the Pelicans come in to be finished? Yes. Where they start and get finished. We got, we got a couple of our core volunteers over here working on the pelicans right now. Heather and her son built one of these pelicans over COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Time, love, anguish, and a little bit of swearing. I like it. <laughs> Spalding feels more like a community. So many ways to get involved or learn new skills. You can even build your own paddleboard or kayak. If somebody wanted to come and build one of these for themselves, they could sign up for one of our classes here. Um, oh, how cool. We'll be doing a paddleboard class. And we also have a little take apart nesting dinghy that we're going to be building in a class as well. And we're partnering with Chesapeake Lightcraft to do these. They provide the kits. So you basically buy a stitch and glue kit. All the pieces are CNC you know, cut out and the holes are drilled and you stitch it together with copper. Oh, okay. Uh, wire and then you fiberglass it um, and then remove the stitches. It's a great way to build a boat if you don't have a shop or power tools. Like, yeah, there's a good place to start. It's a great place to start. This place is so cool. I got lost in here for a while, especially with the nautical library upstairs. Heather continued to blow me away with everything they offer here. You can wire, learn wiring basically. Like okay. Learn an entire, build an entire electrical system, put it all together, we'll take it apart, let someone else put it all together. Oh, learn right how to on. Basically wire up a, a new boat. <laughs> and we have a, a whole diesel engine as well. 
Wow. Put together and take apart. Yeah. How practical. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wish I had I had, know. That. I had to learn it all by breaking things yeah. and trying to like, read manuals uh, and figure out <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> yeah, YouTube, a lot of YouTube. <laughs> Myron Spaulding opened this yard in 1951. A man of many hats, violinist, naval architect, and competitive sailor. Like here's a picture of him on the dory during the 1936 Transpac, doing, taking Whoa. sights with his sextant. And so we have a lot of his collection of navigation instruments. These are plans for that he, you know, that he drew up of, for, for boats that he created. My mind swirled in maritime history, not just in stories, but I could touch it, walk back in time, and so can you. The center now operates as a nonprofit and encourages visitors to immerse themselves in the world of boats. We feel fortunate to be so welcomed here. Redaviva may only be seven and docked next to a girl 130 years her senior, but she's earned her seat at the table. This felt like another achievement. Okay, running propane lines. So we can get the propane tank out from inside of the boat and hopefully not blow ourselves up. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. Welcome to the aft deck where we've stored all of our excess everything tools and fabric and canvas for the sail covers. There's the hole, Garrett cut. So he's gonna pass me the propane line. We're gonna run it through here. Ready for me to pass it down? I am. All right, here it comes. Okay. Perfect. Actually quite flexible. That's good. Little chafe protection for where it passes through this bulkhead. And there's a little corner space there and we didn't actually have to drill a hole. So that's a little bit of work saved. Thank you. Well, that's that open for passing wiring and stuff, so. Yeah, perfect. Ruth is uh, running the lines back there and I'm pretty much going through and figuring out what I need to drill holes through to run this propane line. And we'll need to wrap this one too. Okay. See it? Oh, Billy. Keep her coming. Oh, wait. Too fast. No, it just... It didn't like that. Okay, I think we're good. <sighs> oh. Yeah, we've been uh, we're... working through Garrett's back the last handful of days. I have no idea what my hair looks like because yeah. of the headlamps, but... And old Ruthie the Riveter is uh, picking up the <laughs> slack. <laughs> yeah, ever since, I think it was like the the first or second day that I was editing and Garrett was doing projects by himself and he got some warning signs from his back and they really just haven't gone away. Even yeah. though you've been pretty good at going easy. Yeah, I've been, all this I've, been crawling. Trying to, I've been trying to take it easy, but I think it was uh, it was all the work up at the masthead. Oh bringing yeah. Bringing up the running backs. Um, That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Holding There's, on with all the fairy wakes and stuff. Yeah, I think we're gonna finish it before our friends show up which will be really great because we don't get any work done when they show up. No. I we mean, we get, fun. we do a lot of good work on some bottles of tequila. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we definitely can put back some margaritas. <laughs> and we've found our favorite margarita place here in Sausalito. So I think we're definitely gonna take them. I just want to take the time to acknowledge like what a badass Ruth is like you know for me when I have a pretty debilitating back issue and when it's when it's acting up I really can't do much and Ruth always jumps right in and 
never complains and she's learning a lot and she has a lot more to learn but you know she she just she takes it really well and she jump always jumps right in so um super thankful to you ruth i know you're gonna see this later and uh yeah just wanted to show my appreciation i love you this sign through this boat over here <laughs> it's cut off half so it looks like spa and rigging are those in the same shop I think I want to go over there <laughs> can he get his good side <laughs> he doesn't have a good side <laughs> it's my counterbalance stop it <laughs> it's not appreciated <laughs>